He's uh, proud to be an American guy. He's one of the, uh, the elders of the group. Um, John Kinley, Jake Jenhall's character's uh, right-hand man. They've, they're battle buddies. They've gone through it. So when they're, they're, whenever there's a conflict in the scene or something's happening, Eduardo's right behind. You know, so any, God forbid anything happens to John, he's next in line. You know, so he's kind of, you know, the kind of guys are younger. They're all special forces, so they're all equals, if you will. But, you know, some have been there longer. And Eduardo's definitely the guy to take up the helm. God forbid anything happens to John. So Eduardo, uh, he's the, uh, so in the unit, he's the, the, uh, the Charlie. Um, and what the Charlie is, is kind of like the, the bomb uh, tech. He's a mechanic and he's got to fix something. He's got to find a bomb. He's got to take out an IED. That's what he does in the unit. As far as his kind of personality with the guys, kind of older, you know, be, not, not begrudging, but, you know, he's kind of uh, um, knows his place. They know his place. They respect him. They mess with him. Um, they love to joke with him. They always like to joke on the old guy. Uh, there's a couple scenes where, you know, they're, they're taking it out on me because Chow Chow's, you know, if you're gonna, you know, don this this body, right? This Adonis body, you gotta eat a lot, right? So they're always. That's why my nickname is Chow Chow, because um, I'm always looking for Chow Chow. So they take the Mickey out on on uh, on Eddie for always thinking about food, um, but he just jokes with the guys. But I think there's a kind of respect they have for him because they know he's been through it. Working with Guy has been honestly a manifestation dream come true. Um, he has been one of my favorite directors. I'm not just saying this right now because I'm doing this. He really has been from like Snatch to, to his latest The Gentleman, everything in between his style. You know, it's so stylistic. You know, the Guy Ritchie stamp is so evident in every film he does, um, which was interesting for this one because I think it's a little, it's a departure from what he's done, which is London gang, you know, kind of um, very London. This is completely different. So I'm so excited to see how he stylizes his print on it right um but he's been fantastic i think it's been um at first it's a little jarring um because you know as an actor you prepare you, you learn your scenes you learn your sides you go to set memorized and if you forget a line you ask for it but it happens but you come to set with guy and, and honestly the scene the movie's ri being written as we go based on you know what's going on at the moment you know what can we do can we use the sunlight Yesterday we had a, a bomber airplane take off. They're like, let's use that. <laughs> like that wasn't supposed to happen. So you just kind of have to be ready. Um, and I, I honestly think it, it adds excitement to what we do um, because you're ever more so present in the moment. Working with Jake Gyllenhaal, just like I said with Guy was another dream come true. He's, you know, top three of my actors for the last 20 years. Um, everything from Nightcrawler, you know, to Donnie Darko. So it was kind of surreal, you know, when I got the opportunity to work with him because I've kind of looked up for, to him for so long. And he's, he's such a prepared um, actor. He's so kind of visceral in his, like, his approach and uh, he, he's, his intensity, which he has to be in this. You know, this, this movie's about um, trust, right? It's about building and finding trust with someone you don't quite know in an area, in a battlefield that you're not quite sure if you're gonna survive and he has to learn to trust this translator, this interpreter. Um, and to see him kind of take the scenes, like I said, where Guy will come and change, like, hey, we're gonna do it this way. And his approach to it, obviously he's gotta change you know, the dialogue of what he was gonna say, but he, I mean, honestly kind of internalizes it and then gives out a performance that you would think Oh, he had weeks to prepare for that, you know, but he, he literally just on the spot, but that's, I mean, that's his preparation and the kind of actor he is. And he's been, he's been incredible to, to bounce off of, you know, on screen. We've had great moments and I think there's so much of a uh, within scenes that is like the unspoken, right? Words are words, but it's, uh, it's actions and reactions and to be able to bounce off of him and just play off of what he's doing has been, um, it's been, you know, it's been a masterclass for me. Working with Dar has been fantastic. And what I love about Dar in this film is that I kind of equate it to a, to a hurricane. 
I grew up in Miami, so we got a lot of hurricanes, right? So these Category 5 hurricanes, it's winds of 170 miles per hour, total destruction, right? On the outskirts, that's what we are. That's what the special forces are, the Taliban, John, everything else. That's the hurricane, correct? The, the eye of the storm, the middle is the calm, right? The middle is where it's always calm. You can literally get hit by the outskirts and then it, the, the, the eye of the storm passes you and it's calm and quiet and still. And that's what Ahmed is in this film. That's what Dar is in this film. It's incredible because we came together and it's like, we are an SF team, we're brothers. I mean, we're constantly hanging out outside of set. I mean, on a daily, nightly basis. They've literally become my brothers. I, I recently moved to, uh, to London, didn't know anybody, but now I know when I get back, I have a crew of guys that I'm gonna constantly hang out with. Um, the amount of jokes, the amount of um, just ragging on each other, you know, where it's like I, on set, Chow Chow's always getting the jokes thrown at him and stuff, but it's like that outside of it. We're all just um, a bunch of brothers and it's made filming this so incredible because when we're in the scenes, we just carry that with us there's no acting. And I think that's when you get the best performances. They're, the acting is done, it's all natural. The training we had in this film uh, was uh, done by Kawa Malele, who is an actual Green Beret, Special Forces himself for many years. Um, he's out of Texas now, and he, uh, he has his own company where he does training, um, which is pretty incredible. So. Uh, the training with, obviously we weren't shooting actual guns, um, but everything as far as placement of the gun, how to clear, you know, your teammates, you know, when you're passing by, you can't flag them, meaning you can't have that muzzle on them just in case. The gun and the safety, I mean, we learned everything, you know, uh, where to keep your, your trigger finger, when to take the gun off of safety. Um, that training was, was pretty incredible. This movie, I mean, it's definitely, it's a story of trust. It's a story of overcoming biases. It's a story of, of um, like just love, love of, 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 of life and truth. Because, I mean, these guys are, are, are fighting a war. Um, whether they believe in it or not, they're fighting for their country, all right? And this movie transcends the war. It's about survival and it's about taking care of someone who took care of you. Someone risked their life for you, I'm gonna risk my life for you as well. And uh, I think kids, uh, adults, grandparents of all ages can identify with that because I think that's all, that's all it is. What, like you know, I said, life is, life is about survival, life is about living and preserving that and going the extra mile for someone you barely knew, you didn't trust, but they did everything they can to make sure you were alive. And, and it's, it's that story about survivor, survival never gets old. It really doesn't.